Hi folks, co-tutor here and my name is Anil Deshpande. Welcome to the next video on Kotlin coroutines. In the previous video, we just got started by trying to understand how a thread and coroutine look similar. We were basically able to implement exact same implementation using both thread and coroutine. The only difference was in threads, each and every thread gets a new thread ID and that is why the name of the thread is also different. But in case of coroutine, by default, all coroutines run on the main thread. So that is the reason why there is no difference between the thread ID of the main thread and the coroutine thread. That is where we basically established that how thread and coroutine are quite similar to one another. However, if same functionality can be achieved from both thread and coroutine, then obvious question would be why is it called lightweight thread and what exactly am I gaining or losing by using coroutine instead of a thread or using a thread instead of a coroutine. In this video, we will understand it through once again a another demo. So let's get into a demo. This is the Kotlin thread. It's just same simple thread. I have not changed anything in the implementation of the thread. It is still the same old thread. Only the difference is now instead of creating one single thread, I have written a code to instantiate many number of threads and the number of threads is quite huge. So it is somewhere around 1 million threads. So let me run this particular code and you see that the threads have started initiating and if you run this long enough somewhere you will get this particular error that is out of memory error unable to create a native thread possibly out of memory and i can stop this and try running it again but you will still see the same problem somewhere when running thread after a certain point creating many number of threads will have the performance impact on the program however let's go to coroutine let me clear this in coroutine also i have written same program only the difference is now this particular coroutine thing is being called inside a for loop and once again i am just calling it exactly one million time i am creating one million coroutines and now if i run this you can wait for as long as you want but you will realize that this application will never get stuck anywhere like the thread application was getting interrupted because of a runtime exception this will take its own sweet time but all the coroutines will run and it will create all the million coroutines and it will complete its work for the paucity of time we will stop but i hope you get the idea that when it comes to threads there is a limitation to number of threads that you can create because each threads is dependent on the processor capability and multi-core that is available in the cpu but that is not the case with coroutines so if i try to put it another way in multi-threaded programming each thread is actually getting assigned a physical core of the cpu and that is the reason why depending upon how many cpu cores are there there is a limitation to how many threads you can create and if you create too many threads at some point in time you will hit the bottleneck and you will get an error like out of memory error cannot create more threads with coroutine it is purely a programming construct there is no correlation between the number of coroutines that you can create and the number of cores that are there this can go on and on forever and that is the reason why coroutines are called as lightweight threads in threads it is a heavy resource but in case of coroutine it is not a heavy resource so let me stop here now let us try to understand the syntax and semantics of our coroutine that we have written to make it simple let me remove these unnecessary locks that we have written and now if i run this there are lesser number of locks 
it just makes it easy for us to understand now the first question that you might be asking is what is this run blocking and as you can see here this is a coroutine scope a coroutine can only be called inside a coroutine scope there are various kinds of scopes a sync is also a coroutine scope launch is also another coroutine scope and run blocking is typically used with the main function which is going to invoke other coroutines if i just remove this you will see that i will get a compilation error and that is unresolved reference type async if i can remove this then it is still a compilation error what is the compilation error now it will say that this long running work should only be called from a coroutine or another suspend function so how do you make this function run within a coroutine scope by run blocking coroutine scope and what if i did not have this suspend function could i have called this particular code from directly here within the main function of course you can i can remove this and paste this it is giving a complaint that it doesn't understand coroutine name so let me create a coroutine name and then hard code the delay if i run this you will once again get the same behavior however now you are observing that this main ended is coming at the end so this coroutine is running in a blocking manner it is not running in the async manner and that is the reason why this thing needs to be written inside a async block and this is also a coroutine scope the difference between this coroutine scope that is run blocking and the async coroutine scope is anything that is written inside the run blocking runs in a blocking mode but anything that is written inside the async coroutine scope runs in a async manner so now if i run this you will observe that the main ended will execute first even before the coroutine starts and if you observe you get a suspend function call indication here in the gutter of the id so that is an indication to the compiler to basically suspend this particular coroutine and move on to execute something else if it wants to execute if there is any other coroutine at the end of the day coroutines are nothing but functions with the ability to switch between the executions in normal function calls initiate a function reach the end of the function and then go back to the main function which called it and then probably go to another function and execute that and come back but however in coroutines if you have written a suspend function the overall idea is at the suspend function call you can basically pause the execution of that particular function move on to something else execute it till if they you encounter another suspend and then come back and execute it again that is the main difference between a normal function and a suspend function other than a sync there is also something called as launch which is also a coroutine scope and if i run this you will once again see the exact same behavior as a sync but then you would be wondering what is the difference between a sync and launch if you see here launch returns a job however a sync returns a deferred object so there are advantages and disadvantages between using launch and async which we will explain in later videos but both async and launch give you a coroutine scope in which you can invoke any suspend function and delay is a type of suspend function in the next video we will continue to explore coroutines in a detailed manner so stay tuned that brings us to the end of this particular video don't forget to like comment share the video and subscribe to the channel take care bye